<laughs> Alex, you said that this band was all or nothing for you, and there wasn't any other option. <laughs> Sounds much. quite terminal. What do What do you mean well, by that? Yeah, I mean, well, I never, I never did that great in school, and um, music was kind of my one thing that I had. It was the one thing I was good at, and it was um, the one thing that I really enjoyed doing. And um, so. For me to be a musician was really my only option where I'd be really happy with my life, you know, and I couldn't see myself doing anything else. And, and, and could you see yourself playing with other guys or was it the only, playing with Kevin and Sam was the only option? Um, well, I mean, at, at that at that time, you know, that that was what I, I, I wanted to do. I hadn't played with many other people and um, we had been playing together since we were about 14 years old. And Your schoolmates, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we'd known each other for so long and... Um, We'd been writing together and we were playing together and um, we're best of friends and it it just seemed like the perfect option to um, for this to be the right path. And Kevin, are you getting used to this acclaim now? Does it feel like a, a, a normal job now? I think um, I think when it starts to feel like a job, I think it's kind of a good sign that you're you're not enjoying it anymore. It's still obviously fun and it's it would be the most crazy job in the world if that was your career, like. Because we just love what we're doing, and um, and it's it's every day it's it's something new, and it is pretty hard to get used to. Like the other day when we played a show here in Toronto, you know there was fans queuing outside from nine a.m. in the morning, and like we hadn't even arrived at that point. Like we weren't even in Toronto, and it's just such like a mind blowing experience, and it is pretty hard to get used to. But um, yeah. You still you'd, enjoy it. You'd prefer the fans didn't line up. <laughs> well, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it is cool there, man. But I just always feel really sorry for them. Like it must be really, it must be really cold out there. I have too many questions. It's not cold yet. <laughs> it's uh, much like uh, Ireland. We're still just coming off a of summer here. It's okay. Uh, I, I mentioned you, you come from Northern Ireland. Uh, you said it wasn't the easiest place for a band to be from. Um, it, it does have. A history of producing some remarkable music acts, of course, Van Morrison, U2, Sinead O'Connor, My Bloody Valentine, Snow Patrol, uh, who all hail from your hometown, actually. W were those bands a particular inspiration to you coming up? Uh, I guess more in a sense that they kind of did something with with the fact they're in a band. I don't know, really, musically, not. A yeah, lot. I mean, uh, I've never I've never been a huge U2 fan, but um, well, Alex, you've actually said uh, you've described U2 as being boring and predictable. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure Sweeping I'm statement. sure one of us has probably said that somewhere along the line. Um, yeah. Things point is although being you, you bored two, of asked if we were inspired. You by two, them. I have to say, have some brilliant songs, but they're just never a band that I've been totally into. It was for me, it was it was bands like Ash and the Undertones. Um, and the Divine Comedy um, were bands from where we were from that really inspired me. And um, but yeah, it wasn't always easy being from there. Is the less than enthusiastic um, opinion of you two a popular sentiment where you come from? Given that you'd think that they would be hometown heroes, it's pretty fifty-fifty. Yeah, I think I probably think an art sort of demograph. I think less people like them. I mean, they're definitely a big hit with the older folk. Yeah. I think some of their early stuff is, is pretty good. I remember my dad playing it in the car when I was a kid, but I think it's like any band, you know, I think they're, when you become a massive, massive artist and mm. you sell that many tickets and that many records, then people are obviously going to be divided on it. And I think especially especially from where you come from, it's, sure. it's almost harder like that. And and so if you two called you guys up and said, or the, you know, the representative and said, we're doing a massive stadium tour of the world and we'd like Two Door Cinema Club to open, I, I suppose you'd say, no, you're boring and predictable? <laughs> They'd probably have to pay um, us we, we, we'd money. We'd probably politely decline. You would? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, that's that's consistent then. Uh, it, it's it, it, uh, you know I don't think it's it's not hard to understand the popularity of of, of your band. A tourist history is it's this tight record, short, catchy songs, remarkably up upbeat lyrics. I, I tweeted today, uh, "Happy is the new sad." You know, with with you, with you guys, uh, so much of especially even in, even with electropop these days, young bands is, are predisposed to melancholy. Where does your cheerfulness come from? Or your confidence that you're allowed to be cheerful? I think it's because we were in such a depressing band before this that it was a definite <laughs> switch in tone that we were like, this just isn't fun. People never come to our shows. We don't enjoy playing to no one. You know, it was kind of self-indulgent in the sense that we maybe liked that sort of music when we were 14, 15. Um, but then playing it to no one every night just wasn't 
actually then fun. It was it's more fun to play kind of happy songs that people then started coming to the shows and dancing and things like that. I think it can be our music can be quite ambiguous at the same time. I think like, there is this kind of like this like sheen to it that seems like it's very like right, poppy right. and upbeat, but some there I think there's quite a lot of there's quite a few darker undertones there. I think it was kind of a lot of time like coming through like the industry like that and, and almost like frustration as well of of being in a band and, and knowing what we wanted to do, but like trying to get people interested and, you know, our first kind of like Saul's footsteps into working with, you know, industry types and, and that whole general idea of, should I trust this person? Are they going to, have they got our best interests at heart? And it was kind of, a lot of it kind of like, you know, like two fingers to you kind of music at right. the same time. <laughs> well, but, but will this affirmative uh, sheen remain? <clears throat> or now based on your popularity, will you now sing loathsome, uh, sad songs about how people are lining up to see you? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know where, where it's going to go. Um, most of the songs in the first record are, are very positive songs. And there's, there's a couple songs on there that aren't necessarily positive, but they come across as positive. Um, um, I, I kind of like the idea of putting um, not so not so happy lyrics to happy music. It right, seems right. kind of, um, it's a nice idea to me. But um, yeah, uh, there's, there's um, we've got so much more to write about this time um, because when we wrote most of the first record when we were living at home with our parents and there the really, the, the really wasn't much to write about because um, we hadn't really experienced life, to be honest. Yeah. So um, there there definitely is a lot more, uh, you know, sad things and struggles and things that we've experienced over the past couple of years coming into the new music. But then again, we have had, we've had such an amazing couple of years and there's so many, you know, brilliant experiences that we have to write about so there's no pressure when you're living at your folks place and you're making your first record and people don't know who you are yeah. now you're you've got this international presence uh you're you've got this buzz and you and and worst of all you won album of the year in in ireland Do, does that mean you feel pressure uh in terms of having to deliver something to live up to that as a second record definitely but um pressure is never a, a, any something that we've listen to or let get on top of us um um we're just going to keep doing what we're doing we we enjoy writing together we enjoy playing music together and that's that's the reason i'm in a band that's the reason you know i want to do this and um if it was any other way where you know people were giving us deadlines and putting pressure on us and telling us we had to write music in in this way and you know the album has to come out in this way on that format on this date and it's it's it, it, it wouldn't work for me you know we're just gonna we did what we did and people liked it so if we do that again hopefully people will like what we do next just gotta ask you as a drummer uh, it seems somewhat offensive to me that you're that you don't have an official member of the band who's a drummer uh, why is that we, we, we do it they well, you have a guy who tours with you, but yeah, he's not he's, really in the band. Well, he's he, not. He's not invited today. Right? He's, an, he's, an no. official, he's an official member, but he's a, he's only an official touring member, and uh, he's he's still in bed. <laughs> right. We'd need to have a bigger van if we were bringing drums everywhere for these acoustic sessions, you know. Oh, right. It's not fair to make the crew carry all those drums as well. Right. Leave the drummer in bed. <laughs>